now, here's your hosts, The League Dad, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. Hello and welcome to the All In Podcast. You're joined by Kevin and me, Mitchell, your host today. Uh, playoffs began for LCS and we are past our first weekend. Um, it was an exciting time. Bunch of different variety series. Actually, only two varieties. It was either three game stomper <laughs> or five game banger. Pretty much nothing in between. Um, and we're going to break it down today. But first, I want to ask how you're doing, Kevin. How's life been? I'm doing well. I'm finally settled. They took the boxes out from behind me, so I just have a few boxes of clothes still that, you know, I got to get a dresser for. But, I mean, you probably will see these boxes until the end of time, actually, because mm, I yes. don't know if I actually want to use the clothes in these boxes. I'm a hoarder. Um, <laughs> but, anyways, uh, I've been well. I'm very happy that, you know, weather's been good here. Liquid's winning. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, mm -hmm. I had a really good weekend. Uh and it really stuck in how fast the production was. Even with the even with the analyst desk coming back in between games, it was actually not too long. Probably because I'm just used to watching other regions with long, long pauses. Mm. <laughs> but I wanted to emphasize like how much I was impressed with the broadcast. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, don't die there, okay? Liquid's still in it, okay? You don't have to die yet. Um, yeah, no, the broadcast if I died was... every time Liquid wasn't in it, I would just be deceased. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, if you were a cat, you'd have like two lives left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, you're right, though. No. Um, but yeah, no, this weekend was great. I also felt the smoothest of the broadcast. I mean, also, it's even more smooth when, like, I'm watching the co stream. Like, I was watching a lot of Double mm -hmm. It for Benj and Spica, mm -hmm. and like, Oftentimes there would be a big gap where like they would play like a whole ARAM in between games. But now it's just they talk for like 10 minutes, maybe, maybe 15, and then boom, you're into the next game. Uh, and it is a lot better that way, I think. Um, helps to keep momentum up, um, definitely. Um, but yeah, before we get into the games too much, because I know there's a lot to talk about, I want to just talk about some general stuff, something that's very dear to me and very dear to one of our casters. So Captain Flowers is an LCS caster. His favorite champion is Skarner, and Skarner just got a big rework announced, and Skarner is actually, I wouldn't say he's one of my favorite champions, but he's hes a champion that has a special place in my heart, because back when I did play very, very amateur uh, League of Legends like competitions and tournaments, uh, Skarner was the champion that like kind of propelled me into being one of the best junglers in my league. Um I was named like I think like third in the running for MVP in my little split, you know, just a little bragging. Wow. And it was off the back of Skarner and Udir. <laughs> old, yeah. old Udir? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> old Udir. Old Udir. Uh, old like janky ass Udir. <laughs> that one was so fun. I love old Udir. I love old Udir too. I'm gonna love I'm gonna miss old Skarner, man. Like uh this was a chem tank era when I played a lot and um that just like I just I just have such a special place in in my heart for that time of League of Legends, even though it was super degenerate. Um, so Skarner's getting reworked. Uh, no no more um, spires, right? No more single targets to suppression. Have you seen it by the way yet? His no, rework? Not yet. Okay, so I'll just verbally works. explain it then. Um, mm -hmm. So his Q and W are extremely boring looking. They don't do much, but his E is crazy. Think about a Scion ulti that can go through terrain. So combine Scion R with Smolder E, okay? It goes through terrain and is like a he's like a speeding bullet and if you hit a champion, it like knocks him against the wall, slams against the wall on the other side and like stuns them. It's really really OP, I think. Um I was watching a video of LCS pros like reacting to it and they're like, "Yeah, this is going to be pro pro viable it's uh, the cc already is just too insane um so that's his e and then skarner's ultimate instead of just point and clicking and suppressing somebody instead he releases out like a like a web like a like a cocoon <laughs> and he can suppress up to three people in an area of effect and drag them around it, it looks kind of it looks pretty broken i'm not gonna lie kevin you're gonna want to check out the video it looks pretty crazy the aoe cc on the champion is going to be unparalleled it's going to be nutty what <laughs> yeah for for audio only listeners i was like frozen in place because i was just like Ooh. 
just what listening to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, he's making this up. He's going to say, psych. He's like, yeah, nah, dude. He no. just got like 20x damage for his Q. That's all. <laughs> That's no. the rework. He has a triple suppression available on his ulti. Up to three. But it's a, it's a skill shot now. So, you know, it's weird. It's weird. But, um... Yeah, that's Skarner. I'm excited to uh, play him and then have him be too broken, have him be perma-picked in pro play, and have him get nerfed into oblivion. That's pretty much how it goes for reworks and new champions mm-hmm. these days. So uh, I'm ready for the ride special, as usual. Um, yeah, and then what else can we talk about? Um, yeah, unfortunate news across the oceans and across the seas. Korea still dealing with DDoS attacks, so... Uh, uh, what's his name? Karia released a statement saying like he can't even play solo queue anymore. He can't even fulfill his streaming quota uh, for T1 because uh, pretty much I guess it's focused with games that have T1 players in it. They're all getting DDoSed. So pro matches still can't play. And now solo queue like streamers are already having trouble. But now it's even like just solo queue, right? Like there's just I think the guess is that it's for solo queue betting. Whenever there's a T1 player in a solo queue, there's like bets that are made on the match and people DDoS to try and win those bets and stuff like that. It's pretty ridiculous. Um, but yeah, that's kind of all the news I have to share. Any, any comments you have, Kevin? Anything yeah, I think it's getting kind of ridiculous. They were talking about having like a pure off- offline server or whatever as well mm-hmm. developed or something like that. I think that's for pro only though. <coughs> so a lot of people might not know, but South Korea is one of the most developed internet like networks in a country ever partially because mm-hmm. they have not a lot of land but they're so high tech mm-hmm. so they have amazing internet service really cheap compared to us really fast all that stuff but i guess maybe the downside is that you might share easier routes of attack i don't know you would think their cyber security is better but maybe the hacks are better too um this is terrible uh one thing that is a un- potential side effect of this is like they're just losing good practice both for pro play as well as for just regular day-to-day solo queue, right? And that's the Korean edge. They have better practice. And if they can't do that in practice, we're going to win MSI. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, my heart goes out, dude. There's nothing more annoying than packet loss or just like being in a good position. You get first blood, the game lags out, whatever. Like whatever the DDoS actually looks like, I don't watch Korean streamers that much. Korean Twitch got completely boomed because of uh, local Korean law. Um, but as far as I can tell, like that is a game changer and not in a good way and no one you should never wish lag on people who have done nothing wrong on like yeah. hackers yeah sure but like these are just like normal people trying to have fun playing a game this is for a lot of people you go home and your your respite right your your enjoyment is game like the games like league so having that taken away because some people are just being asshats like yeah that sucks these people should get prosecuted i'm i'm not even like kidding in DDoSing is illegal, especially on mass. That's definitely oh. a crime. Yeah. So. No. Yeah. They, I mean, whoever is doing it should see some jail time. That's that's without a doubt. I'm sure the Korean government will take it even further because esports is a bit more integral to their society <laughs> than you know American <laughs> yeah. society, right? Like it's our, pretty our, messed up. Yeah. Our bosses will be like esports did you typo yeah yeah go to jail anyways buddy yeah Uh, (laughs) (laughs) so i mean that's unfortunate my heart goes out to korea my heart goes out to t1 fans this you know let's be real though it's just msi right china's gonna win anyways so like they can take a break you know spring split doesn't matter come back in summer and win worlds anyways um so we'll see what happens um but you know it, it sucks right it's i'm definitely gonna think that like a lot of Korean players and uh, Korean pro players are going to feel bad that they will. They're, someone's going to attend MSI. I guess two teams are going to attend MSI, and they're not going to feel like they're on even playing ground with their main competitors, which is China, right? Uh, so that's going to really suck. Um, and it's just one of those things that we're just going to have to eat, right? We're just going to have to say, hey, this MSI, like, remember back to previous MSIs with COVID and like going to like in Greenland, so they're just going to have a little caveat where it's like, well, shit, this one wasn't a real one, guys. Like, it was kind of weird. Like, remember, it was like three or two MSIs ago where they just, everybody had lag, right? Yeah. For some it reason, it, it was in three, like Iceland or RNG something. RNG won it, right? Uh, there was a lag one. Oh, and there was also the one where they played, uh, the Chinese team played from home. I think that was RNG. Something they like that. on like 23, uh, the local Korean and everyone else played on like 23 or something ping. And then the others played on... Uh, technically they all played on like a standardized 30 ping or something like that so yeah. that they would be equal right an artificial 30 ping and then oh i remember that yeah, yeah yeah so like you know there's 
everybody still takes those MSI seriously, I'm sure, but like they all have a caveat, right? Like, so it's gonna suck, right? Korea just is not on the same playing grounds as other as the uh, other regions, as especially China, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, that's that's that sucks for them. And then now this is where we get into our copium, where LCS is gonna slide in. Maybe will be the second best region, right? Maybe be China. And then Korea sucks so much. And then it'll be LCS because we had some very interesting gameplay this weekend to talk about. Uh, let's start off. Uh, that was, <laughs> that perfect was our segue. transition. That's we'll our transition. <laughs> That's our beautiful transition. Oh, let's okay. start off with um, 100 Thieves versus Cloud9. Um, so this is one of those 3-0 uh, sweeps I was talking about earlier that we can talk about. Um, mm-hmm. Start off the weekend very dry. Very very underwhelming uh cloud nine versus hundred these was an absolute stomp wasn't even close really cloud nine's back what can i say uh what do you want to what do you want to talk about this series you were absolutely right cloud nine shows up in playoffs budge <laughs> yeah. looked like a human in yeah. playoffs once again i guess i'll just get this wrong until the end of time um uh, the only other thing I would say, <clears throat> because there's not much else to take away from it, besides they all looked really good on average uh, across the board, I would say that the other thing is like, I mean, Hundred Thieves lost so hard that like it's almost not a tilt there. You're just like, dude, we just got boomed today. Like mm-hmm. they said that the scrim record wasn't good. We saw a scrim Hundred Thieves today, and this is their first time in playoffs. And if anything, this is kind of like, okay, now you just turn the loser bracket and. You know, you didn't. It wasn't like you tried your hardest, right? That there was no way in any universe that was them trying their hardest. That was them just not being ready for it. Their first game, especially, really bad. Yeah. Um, they clearly didn't. You could see at least on a few players, maybe I'd say minimum two of them were like mm-hmm. clearly playing below the par. And I was put that on um, sniper and quid. Yeah, I think that they started their game one so badly. It was like, dude, no wonder River can't get anything going. So. If anything, the copium take is like, it's not the end of the... Sorry, I keep looking away because my cat did something. Uh, it's, it's not the end of the world because it was just so one-sided that they don't like... You almost don't get discouraged. You're just like, eh, it's a yeah. bad day for us, right? Um, yeah. we'll, we'll like... You can't get worse than this. It's like, okay, well, any nerves we had, like if you... I personally think if you screw up a game five, like that famous Jensen play on Echo, mm. where he zonyed and, and died for no reason, oh, or didn't push now. R as well, yeah. Um, which is there's a fan theory that that's why he doesn't build Zanyas, but we'll get into that um, as <laughs> often as he should. Uh, so right. sometimes there are, there are angles where it's not every game, but there are angles where he should have had a Zanyas. By now he has like five items, and he'll opt into something else. And I think oh, it's a long standing trauma. I'm actually gonna have to track his item builds. That's see, so like, funny. I've it, never again, heard this theory before. That's so I, funny. I was just <clears throat> I was reading chat, uh, the live chat, um, yeah. as the game was going. So some people were like, ah, "No Zanyas, huh? They won." <laughs> no zombies. Hey. Funny. That's so freaking Twitch chat, huh? Uh, that's really funny. Um, okay, yeah. Well, Cloud Nine, you know, just just to like, hype them up a little more. Um, yeah, they just they pretty much had a terrible regular season, right? It was really bad, <laughs> and yeah. they they brought it back. I think full circle. Like this is a, this is their first series. It's hard to really comment because Hundred Thieves didn't really show up completely, so like you can't really jerk off Cloud Nine that much. But what we can say is like. Everybody looked like how I expected the best team in the league to look like in a playoff series match, right? Like, yeah, JoJo was by far looking like the best mid laner, right? And then we're going to talk about Quid more as this, like, as, because spoiler alert, right? 100 Thieves plays again. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, the, the, JoJo is absolutely insane, and Quid is actually also insane, and JoJo was taking it to Quid like it was nothing. Um, mm-hmm. I, I heard a uh, story um, from Doublelift, because Doublelift was one of Quid's former teammates, uh, you know, last year on 100 Thieves, and <laughs> Doublelift would always say that jo- or that Quid had a mental block against JoJo in scrims, and, mm. and they would be like, hey, so what's going on? Do you, like... What, what's the difference between JoJo versus other mid laners? Why can't you perform against them? And he's just like, I just really, really want to be JoJo. So there is some level of that where, like, you know, Quid uh. sees JoJo as, you know, the best mid laner, the person to beat, right? It's like when other mid laners would get nervous around playing around Bjergsen or other ADCs would get nervous playing around Double Lift, stuff like that, like back in the day. I feel like JoJo has an effect right now where he's just by far the most dominant mid laner. Um, so that's really cool to hear that story and then have it show up and take place in real time where Quid is just just 
getting destroyed by JoJo, just getting solo killed, out traded, just in game one in the first ten minutes. It was a massive mid diff, which you know respect is Quinn's first playoff series. So I mean, I just it was entertaining. <laughs> That's true. He he did just go from zero to hero in one split. So it's actually crazy that this is even a conversation, right? Yeah. I mean, and it's good for Quid because, like, if we think about JoJo, right? Go back to 2021. It was JoJo's first split, and he won the entire thing in his first split. And he was, you know, had his ups and downs in playoffs for JoJo until he became really insane. So, mm -hmm. you know, Quid could be on an arc, right? Um, and then, do you remember, like, JoJo had to overcome Bjergsen to win his title in his first year in 2021 or mm. 2022. Um, 2022, yep. Yeah, yeah. So maybe Quid could do the same thing, overcome JoJo in the other side of the bracket all the way through and i don't know claim his first title <laughs> that's a bit of a long shot but um yeah and then uh to comment on fudge like he looked so bad in the regular season and he actually looked really good like i'm just gonna be honest like hard, I, I can't deny it he looked really good he looked way better than sniper he played the tf his tf was like really clean spacing i was like oh my god wait fudge's hands yeah, it's been like years since i've seen this but cool um Berserker looked <laughs> fine. It looked good. Uh, Vulcan, he was just not inting. He looked decent. I mean, Vulcan was playing engaged supports finally, uh, which is really nice to see. What a concept. I know, right? <laughs> and then, yeah, so I think overall Cloud9 team was just playing well. And yeah, 100 Thieves was just completely getting bodied pretty much all across the board. So that's the first series. Talked enough about that. We're going to talk a lot more about C9 in upcoming episodes and, of course, when we predict the next series. But for now, let's move on to FlyQuest versus Team Liquid. Now, this was a banger series. This was literally game by game. We did not know who was going to win or who was going to lose. It was really, really fun to watch. Um, yeah, give me some, some overall thoughts and opinions on FlyQuest versus TL. Yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly. It was a banger series. Every game was just like such a back and forth. There were games where, you know, Inspire would go up 2-0 and I'm like, oh shit, it's over. Like he's he's going to snowball out of control on, was, I believe it was Viego game two. Hmm. Then Umpty and Co. just like smurfed out of their minds and they played a really good game. I think what we saw throughout this series was that I think FlyQuest showed that they understood their game win cons better in some ways, like in, uh, late game. I think their late game gaming win con identification was better. They had games, I believe every game they won was on Renekton. And like you normally don't think that Renekton is the late game powerhouse, but the games that they picked Renekton into, a lot of times, let me just name a comp. Um, Nico Shinzao, Rumble, Varus, Rel. Four out of five of those people, and arguably if it's not Lethality Varus, are going to be within range of Renekton. You go to late game, that character does its job actually very well. So the, the, the misconception is Renekton generally isn't a super late game hyper carry like Jax or something, but he has a lot of angles and team comps that if you play it, it's good. And so they identified this. They were fine going down against Ignite Rumble and then playing the macro TP Renekton win. Yeah. Um, as silly as that sounds, that is a thing. And they showed that off. Um, I think that Team Liquid side, I think Jan was a superstar. I think that he he played really well in terms of his overall average form. I think that his first couple games on Varus, I'm like, what the hell? Like, what what are you doing? How are you so good? Um, uh, <laughs> they only won God. one of those, but he yeah. himself was spacing well. Um, he was building flexibly, so he was going for on hit in some scenarios or lethality, and he was adept at both. And I think he played with confidence for the most part, especially in the early games. Like, I think he was very strong. Impact is like going to be on everyone's like highlight reel because he got all these solo kills. Uh, we can talk about the details of that. I'll let you handle that on besides the solo kills, but I think he is presence in playoffs was like it was playoffs impact like he is a different beast and he was already good in the regular season so like as as usual i think this guy i will keep saying it even though he did have flaws he if he was on this liquid roster when there was the alfari one which again alfari was actually very good up until playoffs mm. um the alfari roster and the summit roster i think that he would have been a straight their ceilings would have dropped a bit, but he would have been a straight upgrade on terms of average results for sure. Mm. If he had never left Liquid, just like Core JJ, this would have been like the super core, like not not a pun, like the super core of a roster. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, honestly, there's a lot of teams that probably should have never gotten rid of Impact, right? I mean, that's... I mean, it must be just because he's expensive and he gets asked by everyone wants him because like it doesn't make sense sometimes when he leaves. Uh, otherwise, I uh, I think it's like he's like the guy where hey, I know I'm the best top laner. I'm gonna go move to a get get a different job to get a pay increase, right? Every two years, yeah, he, he's jobs. he's the tech job, he's yeah. the tech bro job guy, but in esports, he he knows the game. Yeah, you're not gonna get a promotion as much as if you move jobs, and he. he He's figured that out to a science while still having performance every time he moves. He doesn't like, you know, he doesn't slack when it matters. Yeah. Uh, last thing I'll say is APA got, got his head bashed in so many games. And he was, uh, <laughs> yeah. we'll get into the, the shit talking and everything, but man, he was like, there were some of the most egregious dives I've ever seen in my life where there's no wave. It's just a zigs under turret and five <laughs> people converge yeah. uh, and then lose it to be, uh, lose a two to four trail. I'm I, like, yeah. God, let's talk about APA at the end, okay? At the end okay, of the okay, series, okay. okay? Let's leave APA because he is a spicy topic to talk to. I want to talk about that thing you alluded to. So, uh, spoilers for the podcasters. We actually tried a podcast yesterday, but my internet was so shit that we couldn't <laughs> get through it. So, we're trying it again. So, some of these points we've kind of made already, we're just, yeah, yeah. they're a bit more polished. So, yeah, I'll talk about it here where like impact is on the Rumble, Blippo is on Renekton, right? And normally we kind of see this the other way around. Where it's like a player like Impact usually on the Renekton in the losing matchup with TP, and Whippo is usually the aggressive guy, right? Taking Ignite or or Ghost in lane and playing a lane bully. But this time it was flipped, right? Impact was playing the lane bully with Ignite, and sometimes honestly, it's just how the matchup goes, right? You see Whippo die level one or like really early on, or get traded super hard and have like no CS against a Rumble with Ignite. And honestly, in modern day League of Legends at the top top level. You kind of just have to expect that that's just what happens in your matchup, right? You you just don't have a choice. Like you're gonna die, or you're going to get poked down, or you're gonna miss like 30 CS. Like you don't really have a choice in the matchup if it's played properly. And so I think that's what happened to Blippo. And Impact played it well, right? He he made sure to capitalize on his matchup and get those big leads. Um, but every game went late, right? So when you have a rumble with Ignite and you snowball really early, well, you kind of need to like snowball that to finish the game and like end it soon because TP outscales ignite drastically, like immensely. And you saw that, you know, impact would have massive CS leads in the early game. And then it would just, he would just fall behind because every game went past 30 minutes and Renekton would just have like 50 to 70 more CS by the, towards the end of the game. And honestly, impacts play style with these ignite top laners like rumble. It wasn't that, good it wasn't that polished right because impact as a player loves to group he loves to team fight and there's so many times that i saw uh in the matches where you know there'd be a fight breaking out uh between flyquest and tl impact in the side lane on rumble and he runs over right and then Bwipo can just tp in fights over impact shows up doesn't change the fight and it's like okay well you probably should have just stayed in split pushed but at the same time you stay in split push you probably still lose the game right so you you know, he was kind of in that catch-22 where it's like, well, I stay in split push, I get myself ahead, but it doesn't really matter because my whole team got aced. Maybe I should have just taken Ignite so I could join the team fight. So I felt like Team Liquid definitely got caught in this trap of, like, um, wanting to take Ignite on Rumble. But honestly, just take TP on Rumble. We've seen other players do it. You, you don't have as much prio in lane. You don't get as many solo queues. But the game goes past 25 minutes, and you're way more useful with with teleport on rumble so i think that's my big um that's my big takeaway with impact at least for for top lane is that honestly he played it great his one mistake was literally just <laughs> it's just a summoner change right i think it would have made a, a world of difference in this series um other mm. people i want to shout out uh we we're kind of mentioning yon i totally agree yon was like insane but um he kind of had this curve where i feel like at the beginning of the series he was really cracked like, game one on the lethality Varus, he was really good, even though they lost, right? Game two on the on-hit Varus, he was he was, he was was god. He was Gumayushi, right? He was murdering everybody, doing tons of damage, unkillable, terrifying Varus, right? The, the Varus of your nightmares. And then just as the series went on, I feel like he got worse and worse. He got, like, his laning was still always really good. Team Liquid literally won bot lane in laning phase, like, all five games. But it was the mid-game where Yeon kept getting caught out, he kept having poor positioning, like there would be a fight breaking out on the top side, and it would be Team Liquid favored, but then it would be a replay, and you'd show, oh, Yeon just got caught randomly. So it's actually an even fight, right? It's actually an even trade. And so that, that just kept happening for Yeon. So 
you know, he's still kind of rookie-ish, right? I think this is his second year playing. But uh, definitely got a bit sleepy as, as the... Uh, as the match went on. But yeah, let's talk a little bit about FlyQuest. So what are your thoughts on FlyQuest? What do you think they did well on? And who, who do you want to shout out? And who do you want to criticize maybe? <laughs> yeah, uh, what I think they did well and besides identifying like, you know, how do we win in the late game and being a little bit better on that front, I think what else I wanted to point out was Inspire and Jensen in general and their stability. I think especially um, there were some games where Inspire was just like behind. And he... His general expected value of good choices is just the highest in the league. Higher than Blabber, higher than Umpty on a good day. Like His expected value is just very high. And I think a lot of people who don't necessarily... Like, Inspire's not a flashy jumper. He rarely does anything like a, you know, like some crazy-ass gank or some like disgusting invade that like three three uh, quadrants the other jungler. No, mm. for the most part, he's just very solid and making good decisions and being efficient. As a jungler, I really appreciated that in his first first split his eg split his first split in na mm-hmm. and i was like dude how the hell is this guy sitting on a bench like this is actually absurd to me right he did not fall off that hard mm-hmm. um so i'll give him credit even uh, there is that one viego game he didn't translate from a 2-0 to doing almost nothing on viego but viego is tough um besides that i'll give jensen a huge highlight because this man like he's not washed he, he's not at least not on this team uh, with a real jungler around him he showed four champions in five games his annie was okay in lane but he, he clutched so hard in that game five where he yeah, won he basically he just did all the work uh yeah. he was also just overall very good on talia as well pretty much like there's just certain characters he shouldn't be on and as long as he keeps staying to his pool like he is a positive influence i don't necessarily think his way was like polished enough in terms of the rotations but it's a good character to learn i think that character will be have its place i don't think it's going to be like a pick any time super busted character but mm. it has certain interactions like the the toss sphere that can disrupt dashes the speed up the claw like he actually has mobility despite not having a dash because this thing's kit is overloaded like by definition it's overloaded um so i'm glad he's learning it this is probably the time to get some playoff experience on it and I think it's I think in this patch at least that they're alive on, it is a busted character if you mastered yeah. it. Yeah. I mean Faker yeah. has shown it off too. So it's not like this is the first time you've seen it. Yeah, no, I um I mean it's not even a hot take, but Hui, I actually do think he's going to be if once people get good enough, like it'll take a while for I think every all the mid laners and pro play general to get good enough at him. I think he will hundred percent actually be a, a league staple forever because his kit is way too versatile. He does so many things. He's just really, really strong. Like, I, I think, like, I don't know, like, maybe this is a bit too much, but he's, like, the next, like, Orianna. You know, like, this champion mm. does almost everything. It's just we don't have players who are good enough at him on a consistent level everywhere, right? Like, people are better at Orianna yeah. than Huey. So we're going to see more, you know, Orianna or Talia and stuff, right? But as time goes on, right, I think, like, when Akali first came out, right, she was being picked and played a lot. But because she had a broken ass like W interaction that you couldn't get hit by turret shots, right? But as time went on, they kept removing her and stuff. Akali actually became more and more of a staple just because people all across the globe got better at her, and yep. then she just stopped playing twenty four seven all the time, right? So I think that's gonna happen to Huey. Like people yeah, start I, to get better I, at her, she's gonna see. He's gonna see perma play. I I agree actually. He, he, the fact is, win rate's not abysmal now with how over, like how many permutations for his kit and how many ways you can express skill on that character. Yeah, I think that just means like his upside is like disgustingly high, right? Like Oriana has a lot of subtle strength, right? That you learn to master, but Hoi has like literally two point five x that in terms of options that he can do. Um, I would say that just because Oriana has so many interactions that a lot of people don't realize that she has, but Hoi's like. Team Shield, Team Speed Up, Super Claw, AoE Slow that also bursts and executes, a giant lightning shot shot down that also pokes and reveals bushes, or not bushes, yeah. reveals people in bushes, right? Like, if you actually know what you're doing on this character, and his output is just super competitive with some of the highest burst mages while having very good range, very high projectile speed. The more I describe it, more it sounds like I'm describing like Cassante or something. I'm just like starting to yeah, rant about he's, broken no, mechanics. it's a crazy champion. Like, Hoi is really insane because he also has like a lot of like he's got long range stuff he's got trading stuff he's got like some short range it's he's kind of can do everything right he he is um 
he's like the Aphelios of mages, right? Like, I just feel like when when his, oh my God. when he's like in the right spot, like he can do anything. He can do what any other aid carry does. Like, it took a lot of nerfing and removing of Aphelios's kit to get him to where he is now. So I actually think that's in Hui's future. We're gonna get a lot of his stuff removed as time goes on, and then and then we'll you. see You've how viable he is. Me. Yeah, <laughs> me. this guy is actually the more I thought about, at least at a pro level, right? When you yeah, actually bothered to learn it. Yeah. This guy is not okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a couple of podcasts we were talking with Alistair of how like Hue was a success, and I think Hue is a success now because people haven't realized how turbo busted mm. his skill, his ceiling is. Because once people start to get there, right, there are some amazing Hue players that exist right now. Those people who are the best at Hue are going to get so much better at this champion in the next year or two. And we're going to see some disgusting shit. <laughs> like like Chovy, yeah. Faker, right? They're going to get better at Huey in the next year or two. And they're going to see... They're going to do some stupid stuff. Uh, but let's go back to FlyQuest. <laughs> Talking about them. Uh, I agree with the Huey. I really agree with the Annie. I actually think Annie is a sleeper pick. I saw Annie being played in LCK as well. I actually think she's really strong. Uh, just like in this meta. As like being a mid laner that can be kind of tanky. And just run around and blow people up. Malignance is so good on Annie. It's like permanent tibbers uptime right you like all you do is take first strike you rush malignance and you just ulti the enemy mid laner on cooldown you chunk them a little bit you push the wave you keep your tibbers around for fights and for warding when it comes down your ulti's back up in like 30 to 50 seconds like it's not even that big of a deal right um so any strong viego i think is a terrible champion inspired picked it twice he won one lost one i actually think the champion is I mean, fundamentally very broken because of the the reset mechanic, but his kid has been nerfed and neutered so hard. I just, it's so hard to carry on Viego. Like, I was kind of feeling like as soon as I saw, like, Inspired get a fed on Viego in both games he played, that it's like, that's kind of wasted gold. Like, gold into Viego's pockets kind of <laughs> goes nowhere. Like, it doesn't do anything, man. Like, because, like, you don't even use your gold when you reset, right? When you're in somebody else's body... Your gold that yeah, lead yeah, you have, just, down. yeah, it just disappears, right? It's different. Like, I think like there is a time where like Renekton or Lee Sin, they get early kills or J4, right? They get early kills and then they become useless because they're just like walking bags of gold. That's different now. Like Lee Sin, Renekton, J4, they're actually very useful in the late game. They're very powerful now. Um, like it's different, and I feel like Viego is now that kind of champion where. You know, you get him a bunch of gold, and he just doesn't do anything with it. <laughs> so, um, those are kind of my comments on, on those champions. Um, last thing I'll mention is uh, shout out to Bwipo. He uh, he pr he showed everybody that stopwatch is still busted. It just costs sixteen hundred gold because in the very last team fight in FlyQuest versus TL game five, Bwipo flashed onto. I think it was Yeon, right, or somebody, onto a Terrac ulti. It looked like he was inting, but then he Zonia's, and he, like, wasted everybody's time in the Terrac ulti. And I was like, yep, Zonia's stopwatch, that shit's still broken. So that's another thing I'm going to shout out. I do think late game, we're going to start to see, instead of, like, people building a stopwatch and then selling it, people building a whole Seeker's arm guard just for one fight, right? I think we're going to start seeing it. So, like, Renekton will do it. A random AD carry is going to build a, a, an arm guard. Uh, random jungler is going to build an arm guard like in the late game uh, because the stopwatch effect is still really really broken so that's another shout out there um but yeah other than that masu i think really needs to work on his laning phase honestly he sucks in lane real hard same with uh meech meech and masu the rookie 80 carries on, on the, the top two teams from the regular season bad laning phases great team fighting great positioning so yeah they'll need to think about that um any last comments on the series? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about APA now. We finally got there. We finally we we took there. our time. We got there. So, APA, huh? How are you feeling about him? <laughs> I think he's a... So, I flamed him really hard in the regular season. I did mention on the last week when Team Luka had a great showing um, that they figured out just ignore him. Play around like the fact that they know he's going to die. I think they played it to its logical conclusion. This match, like on paper, FlyQuest is a better team than Liquid. This was like, I was betting on the underdog when I bet on them, and it was a 3 2. We were close. But what I think about APA is like, he has actually shown he does have a pool. Like, sometimes he actually plays a good game, and like, he scales to later, and he's, you know, like under pressure, pressure. He's actually not that bad. The problem is when it's not, when it's just like a steady state, like there's no pressure, he just like throws sometimes. Like he, he's just in a lane and he gets ganked. And I'm like, why are you bored. there? There's yeah. no, 
there is no reason to be there. Like you should be in top, right? But you shouldn't be so exposed or so far out. And like he has gotten ganked so many times, and he just feels like a complete rookie there. Which he like he is close to a complete rookie, right? But mm-hmm. that you played against Faker, man. Or yeah, we yeah. played against Faker T one last year, <laughs> game one. And like you should know better by now, right? I feel like he's almost stubborn about it at this point, which is like so that's a problem. I think his attitude is actually hilarious. I think it's good for the league to have people who spawn discussion. I don't necessarily think it's justified because he, he is kind of like the guy getting boosted by his friends and then <laughs> he's typing talking shit, shit in chat because he's gray screened all the time. Uh, but as I allude to, sometimes Liquid has actually, like the fact that Liquid did a five man collapse on the five man tower die bot lane in that one game when he was playing Ziggs under tower, mm. it, like they know. They know that it, it has a tilting effect. I don't know why the other team didn't just disable all chat at some point. Like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> He's just flaming you. Maybe they did, but I thought we, it was We don't hilarious. know if they do or don't, but yeah. We don't know, yeah. But the, the narrative was hilarious. APA... I think I'll talk more about him in the other series, but I think he's like actually like somewhat competent on RE2, which was like something he was pretty. Okay, you you can say your bit about it, but I think he was <laughs> game five RE was pretty good, and when they were losing, he was actually like trying to carry. Um, he was actually one of the most competent people in that game, and that's like in the hardest game, right? So like, I think this guy has potential, but I am worried that he's such he has such an ego, and like he's not just doing this for the camera. Like this is actually APA. And he doesn't realize or he doesn't accept that he's actually kind of bad on average because um, his highs are good, but is his lows are, are abysmal. His lows are semi-pro. Um, yeah. So you can't build a team off that. Um, mm-hmm. His highs are probably better than Harry in terms of like team play and stuff. Oh, but, yeah. he, yeah. but Harry, even though we were shitting on him, his lows were not on average this low either. So like... <laughs> Harry's lows are pretty low. I'm thinking back to some Akali bullshit he would do, some Azir oh, stuff okay. that Harry would do. Okay. If I remove the <laughs> Akali average, I think his lows were less low, but that's like not fair to say, right? Yeah, Harry's Azir was pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> he would do mind. like shuffle Harry, people. Well, Harry's like, where he should be currently. Safety. You know? Hope he comes back like a Dokla story, but like, yeah. no, I think APA, I, again, he hasn't even had a full year. And he has competed at Worlds and like got in their team through hard times. I just really need to see some cr- like some stronger growth and stability. Like I want to see him be like Pal Fox. The difference between Pal Fox's first and second year. Like mm-hmm. I I really need that, and I think it's possible um, because we've seen those highs. And I believe that your highs when you're a rookie do reflect close to your peak, but your lows should go up as you get better. I don't think a lot of rookies like significantly get stronger as a player um outside of the jungle role the mm. jungle role has had some people like come out of nowhere and be like oh now they're a superstar that's how i feel about it because i think the other roles like are ha- are more hand stiff yeah um yeah maybe yeah i mean jojo right jojo and danny kind of rookies and immediately became superstars so there there's yep. a good amount of exceptions um but Double yeah lift. The, yeah <laughs> to talk about apa though Man, okay, so there, this is a lot of this is a there was a very interesting conversation on the co stream between Doublelift Revenge and Spika. And Doublelift's take, at least with APA, is that he hates it, right? He 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 hates it if you're trash talking and you're losing the game and it looks like because we don't actually know, but like it looked like from Doublelift and my and everybody's perspective just viewing it, <laughs> like APA is typing while literally his team is getting ganked and he's just like waltzing around in river like doing nothing like get your hands off the freaking keyboard and go play the game bro like i i think that's like a lot of people's take on the trash talking is sometimes it's well placed it's funny you know sure but other times it's like it feels like you're like you're playing a game of summoners rift you're playing solo queue right you're trying your hardest to win the game and you're like you're freaking like oh and four top laner is just typing while you're like contesting Baron or some shit, right? Like that's how it is. Sometimes it feels like that, or you know, because we don't know when the LCS broadcast shows the all chat. We don't know when APA is literally typing and when you know the the fights are happening. Is right. there a desync and anything like that? But like the way it was being shown, LCS would show an all chat, right? And then like 0.4 seconds later, like someone would die in mid lane on Team Liquid, and then like. APA is just like jerking off in top lane by himself. Like, <laughs> so it looks nah, really bad man. sometimes, you know? Like, I think that's that- a bad double if take, man. I, there's no way his team will allow that to fly 
These are all veterans. Like they're not here to baby him. I mean, he's not okay, the most important player. Do do we know that his teammates are letting it fly or not letting it fly? Like it, like honestly, like they they might be supporting it and telling him after, like, hey, we support it, but you took it too far, right? He, APA is a rookie. Okay, that I he, could believe. Yes. Yeah, APA is a rookie. He like I mean, this isn't even a double if take. This is just a take that they were talking about on the on the the co stream that I kind of agree with. If I'm being honest, like if hmm. the timing adds up where he's typing. And his team is like getting like attacked and stuff, and he is like not reacting well enough. Like he's not TPing. Like if his TP is literally a second or two late because he's finishing pressing enter in an all chat, that is unacceptable. And I would not be surprised if that happened at least once or twice to APA because he types a lot, dude. He types a lot. He was spamming yeah, all throughout dies the flight a lot series. too. I I think it's mostly when he's dead or at base. But mm. I do yeah. agree there is, especially at base, right? When you're dead, there's literally nothing. But there are moments where you just need to split sec. You should just be watching the map, split second, ready to TP. Yeah. Even if you are ready for it, you need a hotkey to teleport, unless he left clicks like a actual monkey. Uh, but you have to hit like F or D, right? And then yeah. click on it to instantly do it. So in those cases, if if there's any evidence of that in a like a real replay of the t like the times latched together, I think that would have to be addressed. But like I don't know, man. I think that's just that's just streamer drama. I don't think a pro is literally typing in a times where he could be doing anything else. That seems mm. absurd to me. Especially mm. if it keeps happening, right? Like if it's his rookie split okay, I could totally see it. I mean basically yeah. his rookie split. It's it's his rookie but and a half split. With them enough, man. They know that, yeah, they, but then you know he went into the Dignitas series and he literally didn't type at all, right? Because he got, he got well, lashed. What are you gonna type? You're shitting on them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he types every game, and then the game after, he gets a bunch of lash for it because he was getting uh, called out for typing when the game is going on and losing. He doesn't type the next game. I don't know. Seems like someone may have uh, talked okay. to him to, hey, don't do that anymore. I think it adds up pretty well. And if I'm, if I know League of Legends players, if I know streamers, if I know solo queue players and NA, they do type. It does cause them to lose games, and it is freaking annoying to have on your team. Just saying. I, I've fully been into it. I, I recognize this, that these aren't pro players. These are kids playing video games who get paid a lot. Some of them are professionals, right? APA is not a professional yet. <laughs> like, he just started, you know? He's still a kid. He's, like, early 20s, right? He's, like, 21 or something. So I fully That's buy cool. into it. Uh, but we can disagree to disagree. It is interesting and hilarious, if we're being honest, that this is even a topic. Um, we, we're we winning as players. Because uh, <laughs> uh, it started with JoJo, right? I think JoJo was... A, okay, it started with G2, if we're being honest. G2 were big all-chat trash talkers. Nobody talked on all-chat yeah. back in the day. G2 started it. JoJo did it a lot uh, when he first came in, and then that was cool. And then, you know, APA is taking it to the next level. We'll see where it goes from here, the all-chat meta. Uh, I think it's kind of funny. I, I, you know, I'm down to for the for our NA players to go to MSI this this year and and shit talk faker. <laughs> That'll be great. Um, let's see. Anything else I want to talk about? Um, Umti, honestly, he had a really great kick that one time on Tomasu. Oh my god, that, that combo cool was kick. straight out of like LCK LPL combo. Yeah. I loved it. That was dope, but he was a little invisible besides that kick, though, for being real. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was cool. But uh, hey, you know, Yon and Cordage were pretty, were a pretty sick bot lane. They look like they're like the most lane dominant bot lane in probably all of LCS right now. Uh, just need to translate a bit better into the mid and late game. So they got that going for on for them. All right, we talk about this series a lot. What's the next series? Oh right, hundred thieves versus NRG. Another long one. Yeah. Um, I think I had a full prediction rate except this series. I predicted energy to beat 100 Thieves. They did not. It was close. Um, but yeah, energy, our reigning champions, are out just like that to the rookies. How do you feel about that? How did you feel about this series? Elated, dude. I, what it means is that G2 wouldn't even make fifth place in our league. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking um, of, yeah. I mean, it's kind of poetic. It's like the, the young, young rookie team versus like the people who, you know, they're not rookies at all, right? But these are the people who got a second chance. Was the superstar power friendship team. I mean, 100 Thieves feels like they also get along really well. The way River speaks about how he's going to do disgusting things to APA or Umpty or whatever it was mm -hmm. uh, in defense of his teammates. I think overall, this is probably what I want to see. I want to see this 
lots of like competition and like NRG by the end of last year was like, I'm like, wow, this team, when they go home, they're going to be so strong. And my cope is I hope that they were still decently strong, but they weren't ready for the level of like some of these teams in terms of either their confidence in plays, either their aggressiveness, like they weren't doing as many NA bad habits. I mean, we still saw NA Rams like inevitably, but I think especially when I watch 100 Thieves, they're like, they're that team that's pushing the pace. They did what NRG did last split, which was, they, um, yeah, they how? exactly, right? They're yeah. like, wow, that was super risky. Why the hell would you like bet it on that? Why would you push that fast? Why would you push that hard? Why would, but 100 Thieves does it all the time and they, they decide that they're going to win more of those. And you need a style like that to be competitive. Like they, 100 Thieves is not G2, right? Peak G2 level. But that is the only iteration of a team internationally that has like consistently beaten eastern teams right when they play like that mm-hmm. like team liquid beat ig once right like there's like a couple flukes here and there uh c9 beat <laughs> africa or whatever hey uh, let's go but like these are those are you know probably just like they had a bad day and you were playing solid right more so than you're pushing the tempo you're making them uncomfortable the only times i've seen upset, upsets like that are from like wildcard teams playing like crazy right and yeah like flash and hitch teams like that yeah. really good so that's my very quick preview before going into all the teams and stuff like that you can you know you can tell me what you really enjoyed about 100 thieves or nrg and then i i'll go from there yeah uh, i'm just gonna flame energy because i mean these are kind of my this is kind of the team i was rooting for a lot uh we you know we keep <laughs> uh, saying the, the regular the mitchell season. special <laughs> yeah you, you lose his trust yeah no <laughs> I'm, I'm really upset because like energy throughout the regular season they looked kind of good for a while, and then they kind of looked bad for a while, and then they looked good again, and then they went 0-4 in Super Week, and you're like, this is just classic regular season energy stuff, right? You believe yeah. in them, they suck. You don't believe them, they start to get good again. Um, and I guess I believed in them too much because they, they lost uh, to 100 Thieves. Um, they did not bring it back. They always felt like they, they were that team that was playing kind of bad and sloppy, but they still had that that sauce, you know, that they could still bring it together when it mattered. And it kind of went the other way, right? You you made a great comparison. The 100 Thieves had that sauce. 100 Thieves had that feeling where as bad as they play and as doomed as it looks, they'll still somehow find a way to clutch it out and win in the end. 100 Thieves ended up doing that. Energy, man, they had, like, negative clutch factor, dude. Like, like Palafox, I think, was the biggest disappointment. He dropped off a cliff in terms of consistency. Um, Honestly, it was just the Ari and a little bit of the Nico. He could not land ease. He could not land charms or roots, man. It was hard to watch, okay? Because we watched APA play Ari. He started off really bad in his series against FlyQuest. And then he got a bit. He got a lot better, right? Uh, game 5, uh, APA's Ari. It wasn't great, but it wasn't that bad. I felt like Palafox's Ari, it started off, like, okay. And then he just became a charm missing god like oh my god uh, palafox was really was really hard to watch this series um i think his nico and his his uh Talia at the end were, were really rough to watch as well um so that was that was that was tough because i've been a big palafox fan for a hot minute not to say that he can't bring it back but it's it's been a bad split uh dokla i think probably regressed the most out of any energy player like he looked so god awful terrible that it wasn't even worth talking about for most of the regular season definitely <laughs> contender for one of the worst top laners in the regular season i expected him to bring it back a bit and you know what he was a Cassante one trick he looked decent on the Cassante, but he looked so terrible on everything else like he could not live or like win lane or survive on anything like his um God, his I think it was his Renekton and his Gangplank were like kind of game losing. Like Sniper was manhandling him in those matchups. So big bummer for Dokla as well. Um and besides that, like I honestly felt like contracts, FBI and Huhi were kind of jailed by their solo laners. They're kind of in uh they're kind of in like solo lane jail for most of this year. Cause I feel like they it's not like they're playing amazingly, but with the cards they were dealt, they were like it was a little bit of tilt, a little bit of desperation, but otherwise playing fine, right? And it was really energy solo laners that uh, kind of dropped the ball there quite a bit. Um, yeah, that's my takes on energy. Starting off negative. How are you going to bring it back? <laughs> uh, what I will bring back is, I think, compared to their last week, 
of regular season, they were playing better than that. I mean, yeah, if we're thinking about it positively, they took it to a second place team and they were like 0 and 4 or something like that, including the tiebreaker. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they did get some shit together in some senses. I think, as you mentioned, their bot lane was positive. I think Kuhi has taken his time to gel with this roster. I really think there probably was some special sauce with Ignar on that roster in terms of I so. synergy. I think Kuhi is a better player historically than Ignar as a support. Um, even though Ignar has had a couple times like that misfits roster and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and the EG roster, like he has a couple times where he has been good. But I think Kuhi's just overall like he was the kingmaker, right? So the fact that this roster didn't work out. I think it's also that they just didn't gel. Maybe he was a shot caller. Maybe he's more used to being the voice. And I, I, he has some, he's alluded to it on the broadcast. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you can't go into it there, right? It has to be like mm-hmm. seasons later where we really get the sauce or the tea on this. Mm-hmm. The sauce. Uh, but other than that, uh, contracts, not that great. Pal Fox, the worst. Like he only looks good against APA this year in general. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> other than that, he has looked really like he's regressed. Like whatever yeah. happened at Worlds broke his like heart or something yeah. uh, and his hands. And then yeah. Dokla was a little better than his last week, but that's just such a low bar where he was like kind of just inting. So, I mean, for all that, NRG did bring some of it back. And like, yeah. so with that in mind, like, I mean, they were the heavy underdogs with the context of the last week. Yeah. And only our narrative and our fond memories of them 2 0 in G2 and mm. just using the power of friendship for so long, being our only quarterfinals rep that was there, not on a fluke. Mm. Uh, I think that this team faced against a team that just really wanted it and did not get intimidated, did not tilt, and it was a bad matchup. But energy actually, you know, like having the firepower to get second almost is not actually that bad considering how terrible they were. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, energy. We're pretty terrible for most of this split, if we're being honest. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess in that context, you know, they didn't do that badly. It's just in the context of there are previous champions, it's pretty bad. Um, but let's talk a bit about 100 Thieves and how well they did. I actually think that they... Quid, oh my god, if JoJo didn't exist in the league, Quid would just be the best. Like, he looks so cracked. Like, he looks so good in this series. He was Palafox's father. Which weirdly means he's like APA's grandfather or something like that. Like, Quid was nuts, uh, this series. Um, like, every, I think all five games, I felt like Quid was performing, which is, I think, really rare to say for anybody and any player in any series, right? Like, though, like, you can say that about Faker sometimes, right? Like, his Galio five games in a row. But, like, Quid felt like he was a 1v9 machine almost every single game. Um, even in the games they were losing, uh, he was their, their main, like, star of the show. Um, so that was really impressive. i just so glad 100 Thieves gave Quid another chance because, boy, were we all wrong about him. Um, I did like Sniper a lot. He was hit or miss. Um, but when he hit, oh, my God, he was slapping Dokla. Like, it wasn't even close. Like, <laughs> he um, just plays so aggressively, which I love. And he's got a lot of... A lot of stuff to clean up for Sniper, but when he hits, it hits good. Uh, he's very aggressive. Um, so that is respectable. River, of course, I think he had a little bit of tilt in that game one on the Jacks. But besides that game, it felt like River was very consistent. He was he was on point, right? It was River and Quid. They look like probably the best jungle mid in the whole league. Like, I think JoJo is a better player than Quid. Blabber, you know, Blabber versus River is debatable. But as an actual duo, though... I think Jojo or Quid and River have them beat than Jojo over Blabber. Like uh, when you combine their powers into one. So I like Mm -hmm. that a lot. Like River was cool. He also had a really wide champion pool, right? Played a lot of different stuff. Um, And then Meech and Ayla, you know, I think they were a quality bot lane, but once again, they kind of lost most of their lanes, right? They, um, the game one, Oof, the Orn for Ayla was bad. Okay, I'm glad they tossed that out real quick. Because then you go to game two. They did the the Senna for um, Smolder trade again. Uh, but then they picked Seraphine. And I was like, okay, this is much better. This is much, this draft makes way more sense. Because the uh, the Orn was not it. Uh, the Orn-Senna combo. Um, so it was interesting for draft. Where 100 Thieves and Energy, we actually saw the Senna versus Smolder trade. And um, yeah, I think Spika was saying a lot that he thinks Smolder is really op but senna is even more op and 100 thieves they made a point to prove it by first picking senna and giving over smolder instead so i thought that was interesting that um speaker's take was right i don't know how i feel about it i think they're both stupid (laughs) i do think that like smolder is easier i think to be a late game carry because you just 
click people and they just kind of die. They just kind of execute and burn. Um, but, you know, I think Senna has a lot more early game potential for a team. So, you know, pick your poison. I hate both of them. Destroy both those champions. Senna and Smolder, goddamn. Get get them out. But that's okay. That's okay. Um, yeah, any last things on this on this, uh, on this this series? I, I really liked what 100 Thieves had to show. I mean, felt like, you know, Meech and uh, Masu, the academy 80 carries that joined for 100 Thieves and FlyQuest, they ha- they're like the same player to me. Is that weird? They feel like they're the same player. They start with M. They play they're, 80, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're both 80 carries. They're both on the top one and two teams. They're both from academy. They're both rookies. They both have like pretty sus laning phases, but pretty good mid and late game team fighting and positioning. They just feel like they're the same person. Their it's names aren't memorable. They're like a nonsense word. Like, I don't know what a Masu is. I don't know what a Meech is. Maybe, uh, it's, your, maybe it's your nickname. Meech is at least. I mean, Mitchell. I'm Mitchell. I don't know. Maybe his name is Mitchell. <laughs> Meet yeah, you, I guess no. so. That's I guess more memorable. Uh, I do have an actual comment. I think that I saw a comment. Maybe it was Doublelift's co-stream, but someone commented like, "No, the Doublelift definitely would have said this." But I saw a comment somewhere that was like, "Basically, Sniper is what Tenacity wanted to be: mm, like the carry yeah. player, young prodigy." And I think honestly, it's it's ironic. It's on a hundred these because like, I mean, Tenacity might have been able to do it. He only got like two shots. He got a Fiora game where he got fed, and he fell behind after like. He had a big lead, right? And then he had one other carry game. And he basically got put on tank duty for the rest of existence. Uh, they don't care. Dude, me- Sniper, like, feeds his ass off on this roster. He plays, like, dog sometimes in lane. He plays, like, an actual monkey. But then sometimes he pops off and they're like, yeah, keep going. You will build your muscle memory so you have less of the dog moments and more of the hyper carry moments. Kind of like early, early, early days blabber, right? When he had to switch off with Sinscare whenever he got too inty or too tilty. We don't talk about that as much anymore because for the most part, when it matters, he's like a lot better. He's a lot less stupid. I used to call this guy the dumbest jungler in LCS. <laughs> I haven't said that for at least like two years now in terms of like consistently at least. Yeah. Uh, I might bring it up as a meme more, but like I respect the guy now. Um, yeah. And they play Jace, Jax, 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 Aatrox. Like, when the hell do you ever see any NA team? N- no less a team with a rookie who's like just turned of age to play pro get to play like that. Yeah. I love that. I really love that because we don't get skill checks against these carry players in NA. Like, Fudge pulls out his Fiora. Oh, he wins a game. But we don't get this often enough. So we don't get the reps in. So when we play against a hyper carry from China or Korea, we're like, holy shit, the Shy is doing unspeakable things. Or Zeus is, like, legitimately playing in Pislo right now. Yeah. No, it's true. I really do like that. And I think that it's a big part of the development of 100 Thieves in that, you know, Closer was a great jungler. 100 Thieves, right? But he played with the same people his entire career. As soon as he stopped playing with the same people, he was not the same person at all. I think this is a big deal. Big props to River. River's played on like 30 different rosters, man. River was playing in different regions, making it to MSI and winning against the best teams in the world in a different country. Coming over here, he's already been on like three different rosters, looking great on all of them. I do think that that is a big deal if you're a rookie where it's like, you know, Tenacity came in, he had an uncomfortable jungler, he had two superstar mid lane and ADCs who are very old and very stuck in their ways, and then instead to this team where it's like, River is definitely a leader type of player, right? He, he can lead, um, you know, young, random, unknowing, not knowing what to do rookies. Uh, with a bunch of like new fresh blood, like a bunch of people who are going to be more similarly minded, right? Like how much can Sniper and Bjergsen really relate versus Sniper and Quid? They're both really new and they're both kind of like just getting it together and River's there to to lead the way. I This is just such a cool roster. 100 Thieves is a surrender, Cinderella story. Like, God, I hated the rosters for like years, right? I Because like... Their old roster with like someday closer um, Abadagi and FBI Huhi, they went from being really insane and really like aggressive in 2021 to being like the most brain dead scale for late kind of team, right? So hundred these they brought it back. I hope this team never turns into that, but man, this team is just fun, aggressive, and fast paced, um, and they fight with the power of friendship, the power of love. All right, that's. That's a good talk for them. And then, yeah, just to, just to send off to our last team, Team Liquid versus Dignitas. Honestly, not much to say on this. Um, it was very one-sided. I will say Dignitas looked pretty good for the first 15 to 20 minutes of game one. 
<laughs> and That's it, and true. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They did. They had a good uh, game they... one. Um, yeah, I don't have much to say either. I mean, it, the APA... Okay, so I we had a discussion on the previous iteration of this podcast about how I think Smolder's broken, mm. while actually in reality, his win rate is very even, at least in NA, right? They haven't mm. figured out how to play him. I'll I'll amend my statement. I think you're right about that. But I do think Jan and Team Liquid's Smolder is broken because mm-hmm. what they're really good at is their early game planning has always been pretty good, win early, whatever. And their mid game has gotten a little bit more stable with Umpty and Impact for sure. And now they just have a win count that cannot fuck up. With mm-hmm. Jan on Smolder, like it's you know it has a super good mobility spell, which is its big edge over Senna. It doesn't require you to stand still in auto very much at all. And you can just play safe and just siege from a mile away. And unlike Senna, there isn't a single moment of vulnerability, basically, if you're playing with your brain on, right? So I think it's just exactly fits their wheelhouse. Every time I see Team Liquid Lock in this super simple, will never work internationally, ASOL Smolder comp, I'm like, we won. Drop the, <laughs> yeah, drop, yeah. Drop the mouse. I mean, Ziggs, Ziggs Smolder, oh, we won. Like, I think yeah. Team Liquid knows exactly how to abuse NA with it. I don't think it's going to work internationally. I think it will get its shit kicked in if they try it but they found a winning formula the second they get smolder they have not lost once on modern smolder yeah uh, yeah i 100 yeah, percent agree oh no, yeah yeah i mean here my take wasn't that smolder i wasn't saying smolder was bad i think smolder is mm-hmm. really really good i just think that there's times i think that senna is better so mm-hmm. i think that's why um 100 thieves for example was first picking senna and giving over smolder to energy there's other times we've seen that happen I think it's why that the the ban always starts with like, uh, you know, if you ban Smolder, we ban Senna, the other one. Like that's the trade kind of thing, right? But yeah, if you give Team Liquid Smolder, I do think it's a free win. I actually think that's probably true even against the best teams. Okay, Smolder's gonna get nerfed, so it's not gonna last. But if if Team Liquid were to play this comp game one that they did for Team Liquid, um, with freaking what was it Renekton, Zinjiao, Aso, Smolder, um, Rel, right? That is literally three meatball cc bots early game with two of the best scalers in the game i think they probably beat a lot of good teams because that shit's just broken right <laughs> like i think honestly this is something i was thinking about why didn't team liquid do more of this against flyquest every game against flyquest went to 40 minutes why weren't we playing more asol i actually kept thinking that when watching the flyquest series because i remember a week ago or two uh, when we were predicting the series, I was like, yeah, you just ban Aesol, Ziggs, and Smolder, and like Team Liquid can't win. But Aesol was up every single game. Ziggs was up most games. In fact, Ziggs was up in Game 5 versus FlyQuest TL, and they opted to take Ari instead of Ziggs. And I was just confused. I was like, wait, I thought Ziggs was like such a free win for this team, but sometimes Team Liquid doesn't choose to take it, even though it's right there for them. So that is interesting. A little concerning, if I'm being honest, because... If there's one thing, I will flame APA. I will not talk slander on his Ziggs or Asol, though. That shit's good. Like, I, I think he should play that more, honestly. I think he should play it every game until he gets permanently banned out, if I'm being honest, right? When you're in playoffs I like agree. this. Yeah, he, I don't know why they don't do it. He used to be an Asol main, too. I mean, obviously, the character is, like, fundamentally different. But it seems like he has the... He seems to be at least, like, a top two or three Asol player in this league in terms of, like, his ability to not defeat his ass off early and actually yeah. like be... It. He knows how to play the character. Like, clearly, he knows, well, Asol has a mobility mode and then he does stuff. Yeah, <laughs> like he, he gets it. barfs on you. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I wonder how the next series for Team Liquid is going to go. Like... They should just play Asol and Ziggs every single game and force their opponents to, like, ban that shit, right? Because, like, mm-hmm. I don't really see a reason not to. His Ari and his Nico is not making me feel confident in APA, right? Like, just pick the shit you're good at and make the other team respond. And then, boom, you have a bunch of openings for your other players, right? Because, you know, people are banning, like, Volibear against Umti. Like, and they're banning, like, Eons Varus and Callisto and stuff. Like, true. I'm like... Guys, like, why are people just banning his ASOL? Oh, because they're not even picking it. It's so weird. So, yeah, I mean, let's see. Uh, to talk about Dignus Toss, because we're not going to talk about him anymore until after MSI, probably. But um, for a team that's pretty much mega underdogs uh, and has a lot of, like, greenish players, right? XU is a rookie. Uh, Tomo is not a rookie. And Tomo and Isles aren't technically rookies, but they've only been around for, like, a year or two, like, not that long. And they've always been on bottom tier teams. 
I actually kind of liked what they had to show, considering that they were such massive underdogs, right? It's not like anything was close. It was not a close series at all. But, you know, I think there are times where Dignitas would have been disappointing to watch versus like, hey, you know what? I'm actually here to see how well Tomo and Isles can do in this clearly one-sided matchup. Um, and they were okay. They, they could have been worse. Uh, Dove was, I don't know, kind of un, un, unassuming. He was very mid. I don't, he, well, he was mid, but I don't think he did anything horrendous or he didn't do anything that amazing. XU, I thought he had a great early game in game one and then kind of dried up. Uh, and Rich was a bit of an inter. Let's be real. Rich was kind of an inter. Uh, <laughs> this is <laughs> true. Uh, yeah. He it's had a Jace, very bad series. His Jace was a good game one, honestly. It actually was, so but everything else he was kind of inting like crazy. I guess um, that's one third. <laughs> yeah, one third. You know, could have been worse. Um, yeah. Anything else? Any send off to Dignitas before we move on to next week's yeah. games? Just so that everyone remembers so that we said last week. I mean, this is a, like a team, like not a terrible, like misaligned, like no identity team. They're like stable. They like kind of know how to play the game. This isn't bad. They they could improve from here. This is like actually the first time in a while they don't look like a terrible coin flip, like a weighted coin flip that usually hits tails and looks terrible. Yeah. So they, they uh, look like a good team that just needs more time to cook in a bit better direction, maybe some slightly and a little bit more firepower somewhere. I don't know yeah. exactly where I would choose, but they they're they're lacking just a little bit on that side. Maybe yeah. maybe their bot yeah. lane i don't know yeah hard to say i also think their drafts need a bit, need a bit of work right like um you know maybe uh let's 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 not let's not do the the game two draft where we we draft a bunch of like i don't know they drafted silas into that comp that felt really hard to play for him uh the the varus ash right when you're when you're if you're gonna play against like senna nautilus and stuff like you have to dumpster the crap out of lane and you have to just roam a lot uh, you have to get your jungler invading and stuff like they, they're playing these really aggro drafts and not really fully committing to them and, and they just need a bit of tuning but yeah all right let's move on to next weekend's games this is going to start off this is going to be i think a really good series i think it's going five games team liquid versus 100 thieves there's just no way this is not a banger right this is just going to be a banger series uh these both of these teams fight to the death tooth and nail uh, <laughs> so uh tell me what you think and who's gonna win I think that oh this is actually scary I think that a hundred thieves kind of has this one. Um, oh shit oh I'm, shit I want to vote liquid you know I want to vote liquid as always but in this case like I think the fight that a hundred thieves put up against NRG who could have actually legitimately just been a very good team like they might have come back and they were just pressured so hard that it was hard. Like, you never really know, right? This is the problem with, like, if you don't show up day one, yeah, I mean, you only get two lives, which is pretty good anyways. Um, yeah. But I think they showed enough in terms of, like, a cohesive ability to pressure as a team. Uh, I think the Quid being so strong is a super big red flag because right now the only times Liquid looks good is if you don't pressure mid. Like, if you don't pressure mid and snowball it elsewhere. Uh, that's the asterisk, right? Team yeah. Liquid is very really cynically playing around the mid laner anyways, but if they can really like use River, who's a very good jungler as well, to take that lead from Quid and just like ruin Impact's day, ruin bot lane's day, who is getting like free bot lanes, right? Because they are dominant by themselves. I mean, what does Liquid do from there? Um, so it, it it's honestly like a three one, right, or a three two, if if I want to be optimistic, but it's probably a three one. I think that. The only thing you could say is Liquid looked better in their two showings. One was against Dignitas, which doesn't really count in my head. Mm -hmm. And the other one was against the, the number one team, right? So mm -hmm. in that sense, Liquid is stronger. Um, but I think the problem being is like 100 Thieves just like is going to be upswinging and they, they will play like that no matter what. And I don't know if Liquid has figured out what to do. Because the, if they do the cynical draft, if I see... Volibear, Shinzao, Jungle, some kind of carry, uh, not carry, like some kind of stable top laner that can like do pressure, and then just two hyperscalers bot and mid. Yeah, we win. But like, I don't think Under Thieves is that stupid. Um, uh, knock on wood, they might be. Uh, but if they if 
if Team Liquid doesn't get their Exodia comp three times, it's not going to be close, I feel like, in terms of their play style clash and mm -hmm. how much stronger. We just equip Rivers number one. I think they they probably are, especially if we count regular season C9, right? If it's just playing off C9, oh, yeah, play off C9 is better, but like that's three games. Yeah. Um, so that's all I have to say. I'm really, I mean, Liquid stomped Dignitas, but my problem is like they didn't get tested. They didn't get like more pressure on them. They didn't like learn or evolve like i mean they just sat there and they just destroyed them and i was like okay yeah. great but you need to be pressured if team could beat nrg i would have said this would have been so liquid favored yeah even though like you know both games were lower bracket teams who haven't shown much in regular season jesus yeah 100 of these kind of got unlucky they had to play energy in their lower bracket right c9 into <laughs> nrg is probably like the, one of the hardest route possible right it's one of the hardest things you can do yeah i mean 100 thieves rookie team right young and heart filled with adventure tested through like the burning depths of fire right that was the hardest test and they're here they're alive yeah i'm gonna have to go to 100 thieves as well I, you don't I want think to it's get in the way of a team like that when they're yeah. on fire. Ugh. I think it's 3-2. I think it's 3-200 Thieves. I don't think it's going to be clean. I think Team Liquid is going to push it back really hard. But mm. like, yeah, I think it's going to be close. And I wouldn't be surprised if TL win. But there's just such a big mid gap. Like, I just think the mid gap is enormous. Like, oh my god. Um, I also think there's a bit of a jungle gap, right? It's not like Umti is bad, but River mm -hmm. is just that good. River is like on top of the world right now. He has been for the last two years. Like, just looked like one of the best junglers in LCS. Um, Sniper, I think Sniper's probably going to struggle a lot more against Impact than he did against Dokla. So that'll be something for Team Liquid. I also think the bot lane, I ex fully expect 100, or 100 Thieves to get their, their early 10 minutes laning phase kicked in by Team Liquid every single time. Like, I just think Team Liquid is probably going to win every bot lane matchup for as long yep. as they're in playoffs, right? It's just they can't translate, man. They can never translate it into a win. Yeon can never not get caught at least once in the mid game, and they just don't consistently have good team fights, good team fights, good objective setups. Like they're just awkward, right? And then, um, yeah, I, I I think it's gonna be hundred thieves. I think it'll be tough. Uh, it is also interesting, right? It's Ayla versus Core JJ, Master versus Student. You know, the student always overcomes the master. Like LCS is anime. Let's be real, guys. It is. So, yeah, I'm going 100 Thieves. I'm going 100 Thieves is going to win this one. All right. Uh, we're in agreement on that one. What was the other one? What's the other series? Uh, FlyQuest is it all... C9. FlyQuest C9. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. FlyQuest. Ooh, man. This is going to be spicy. Yeah. <laughs> this is interesting. This could uh... honestly be anything. What do you think? I think that... <laughs> C9's win against 100 Thieves. I'm um, sorry, I was just thinking of uh, which order. If I wanted to start with this line or the other one. But well, C9 good. versus 100 Thieves win, I think, was misleading for C9. I don't think they learned much because they just, like, they rolled in, played like they should, played at the level they should have this whole time, and they stopped them. They didn't get tested. They are cold. They're legitimately cold. That's that's what I think. Um, do I think that FlyQuest will win? Yes. I think FlyQuest should win this. I think FlyQuest had some actual <laughs> struggles against liquid and it was like a big it was like a very intense match right and the fact that jensen came out looking that good is just like only good things for this matchup because they already did well in the regular season um i forget it was a 2-0 or 1-1 but i believe it was a 2-0 um and if jensen can even play to like 90 percent of what he showed in the liquid series like that's the only thing i was only the only thing i was like worried about in the head-to-head -head, um truly because i don't think Fudge is smashing Whippo five games, okay? Even if Fudge looks good, I don't think it's a five-game thing. They did have a pretty good last showing, uh, I think, day four. Fudge, oh, they did. They went 1-1. One, one. I believe Fudge actually won against them last time. But uh, I'm not that concerned. And then Berserker and Vulcan, they're not, like, lane dominant, even if they are a good bot lane later on with their hyper carries. I don't think they're, like, smashing in their heads, right? So to me, head-to-head -head in a five-game series, I think FlyQuest wins 3-1. I think that if you come in and you just 3-0 the enemy team and the other team rolls over, like you've learned nothing. Um, so yeah, they look scary. They look like they're back to form, but I think that is actually a fluke. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Hot takes. Hot takes indeed. Yeah. I'm going to yeah, go the other way. It's pretty with hot this. weekend, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, yeah, I think I'm going the other way. I think I'm predicting Cloud9. Yeah. Um, hmm. I think FlyQuest, they did learn a lot. They did have a lot of growing pains in their Team Liquid series. They were tested, for sure. 
And I think it's because FlyQuest had a lot of like games where they let things slip, where FlyQuest was always kind of the team that had like the general overall macro kind of in their hands, and Team Liquid would come in and win a game or here and there because one they would lose the other game, or two FlyQuest would just let things slip in a late game team fight, right? I just I just don't see that happening against C9. Like I just don't see that working. Like if you let things slip against C9, like I just think C9 is gonna have a better control of the game. Um, I also think same thing is gonna happen, right? Berserker and Vulcan are not as dominant as Dion and Core and Lane, but I expect similar things to happen. I do think mm. the Hundred Thieves bot lane is going to lose on average pretty much every single game <laughs> against them. I just think it's probably gonna happen, right? Because like. Man, they're so rough at laning, man. Both the uh, FlyQuest and 100 Thieves bot lane are just... They just feel like they're kind of just bad at laning, right? They just, they're good at team fighting and they're good later on in skirmishes. But, like, you know, Berserker is kind of the same. And that is not that he's bad at laning. He's just not lane dominant. But I think if you give him this lane, Berserker and Vulcan, I think he will become lane dominant. We'll see. We'll see if it actually comes through. Um, man, I think I'm going to go Cloud9-3-1 against FlyQuest. Um, top lane, let's see. I think Fudge is going to be able to handle the Bwipo counterpicks much better because Bwipo has done something that I've noticed is that he doesn't actually play ranged top laners. He plays a lot of... All of his counterpicks are like juggernauts and bruisers and like melee carries, right? Fudge will play some ranged top bullshit and you will be miserable. And they'll, they, I think like C9 has a way higher ability to flex than other teams um mm. just because of their uh the ability to play range tops uh to switch around with mid and adc right um i also think that jojo yeah jensen's really good jensen is really good but like jensen can only play one style of champion i think jojo can play anything i still think jojo is the best mid laner uh jensen is like like up there top three right like between him quid and, and jojo but mm. yeah, no, I just I just feel the JoJo. I just feel it. So kind of kind of tough. I think also Blabber inspired. They almost feel like they're the same jungler right now. They like they're both just more macro heavy, like good decision making, like some decent plays here and there. But it's like all big brain stuff. Um, it's a hard one to predict. I do I can see it kind of going anyway. Honestly, um, it depends how much FlyQuest has improved. Here's something that I will note. Inspired has a great track record of improving in playoffs, of getting better. His teams always get better as time goes on. So it's it's really hard to say. I think this could be one of those things where if like if FlyQuest only improves to the FlyQuest is going to improve, but they're going mm -hmm. to only improve a certain amount, right? Mm -hmm. I think, and I think C9 is better than that. There's always a chance that, C that FlyQuest improves beyond what I think, and then that's where we get into the territory where I would predict FlyQuest. I just don't know if I see it yet. I just don't know if I believe it yet. So I'm going to go C9. I'm going to go C9 through one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So we are in You've been pretty right about C9 guesses throughout the years, but I... It's true. I'll, I'll, I'll have my day. Yep. You'll have your day. Yep. And then we'll keep predicting because <sighs> um, if, you know... I mean, hey, last year, I predicted C9 to win the whole split because I literally had zero faith in energy, and they did it anyway. So anything could happen, you know? <laughs> uh, all right, so what's what's next? Okay, I think all we have to do is predict, like, the things that happen after these matches, right? So let's assume, Pretty since much. we both predicted 100 Thieves, 100 Thieves would play, what, the loser of Cloud9 versus FlyQuest, right? So is 100 Thieves beating FlyQuest or Cloud9 to make their way to the finals I, I think, think if cloud nine wins mm -hmm. or loses then i think there's no way um mm -hmm. that they I, I basically the fraud allegations are true and i think they'll lose 100 thieves as well on the way oh. down on the rematch which is spicy right yeah okay uh, spicy i think if fly quest drops i think it'll be close and i would give it to fly quest still mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i think i'm predicting fly quest to drop down mm-hmm I think 100 Thieves is going to beat them if they drop down. I don't know. That's a tough one, bro. That's really tough. It's, it's tough it, it, because it always depends on how they drop, right? Um, yeah. But yeah. I, I just assume if they drop down, it's probably going to be a close series with C9. I think it's so... going to be close. Yeah. 
I think it's gonna be it's gonna be close. I think between all of them from now on. I think it's just gonna be close in general. I think Hundred Thieves versus Team Liquid is gonna be close too. Hundred Thieves versus or Team Liquid versus whoever they play in the next round. Um, but hey, you know it's it's four people in the race. Also, I think we we both just cursed Team Liquid to get fourth place again, didn't we? We did. They're fourth place. No, no, we both voted against them. They're going to win. I can't wait. <laughs> Okay, yeah. I, you you fell for my trap card, Mitchell. I, I led you into this. We're agreeing on Team Liquid's outcome. It's true. Just you wait. Come this weekend. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll see. We'll see. I'm excited. Uh, Any last thing we want to talk about? That we've been going on for a minute. Yeah. So two things. Uh, two players said some things that were funny recently. I wanted to highlight. Umpty said why he's never given up on pro play. He said, and I quote, I believe that players just learn after losing. Just losing gives you a lot. Dot, dot, dot. I learned from seven years in Korea very many things for losing. I know that my win rate is terrible, like 35%. So I just learned for 65% of my life as a pro. And I was like, damn, man, that's a good attitude. Most pros are like, damn, I, I, uh, I kind of washed. Um, the other one I wanted to mention was, this is EU, but Swyru or whatever for the Team Heretics. Hmm. He said that um, Flack had told me that he had no power to go to the gym, and I turned off his PC. And basically, <laughs> he just said, like, so, like, oh, you don't have power? So I turned off his PC to give him power. I'm like, brother, what, what the fuck? <laughs> so he basically was just like, yeah, you're going to the gym with me, bro. So uh, I think Flack is going to be uh, jacked as hell at the end of this year. I, I if he goes so. to Worlds, we'll just see him. I'm like, yeah, that's character development. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. I mean, yeah. Um... Yeah, I, I've been actually digging the Heretics roster. I felt like when they had perks, they were honestly it looked like so bad. But then now that perks is off, Yankos is like unleashed again. He looks like the best jungler in the league all of a sudden. So maybe there's something there. Maybe perks really is washed. I don't know. But like, holy cow, Yankos looked like he had Yankos like is so legit, man. Yeah, dude, he had like the chains from his like legs like released, like like Rock Lee in Naruto. Like he yep. just like like perks is gone and and like Yankos is back. Like. It's so good to see him back again. So I've been I've been digging the heretic stuff too. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I I, uh, I I've been enjoying this split. You know, only eight teams in the league, and it's actually been really fun. I just wish there were more games, honestly. But now that the regular season's over, this playoffs has been a blast. It's been awesome. Like I feel like every team that I've watched has been really interesting. Like every playoff series has been interesting for one reason or another. Okay, maybe the Dignitas was probably the most boring one, but like but it was, I was quick. It's yeah, quick. it was quick, and That's I was interested. Thing. It was good. Um, yeah, uh, so normally I think we would cover the patch, but I think in playoffs we don't change patch. So we're we just going to – we're not going to talk about the patch. We'll talk about it another day some other time. But the patch was we, interesting. We should say goodbye to Quickshot. Oh, yeah, goodbye to Quickshot. I, I, that was sad. I I can give a little more flavor to it. I'm not going to get into the reasons too much of why he was removed. He did some pretty silly things at like a nightclub or something and it was caught and, you know, it's a very bad reflection of him, but uh, I don't know if necessarily should have been losing your job, but you know, they're in Berlin. So yeah, it's probably the wrong place to do what he did. Uh, He's been removed from LEC. I want to spend a little bit more time, like a minute or two, just like, he's like, to me, quick shot is like, the kobe of our region he's been here since the beginning um unlike kobe he was a little less likable at the beginning because he's like always been great at talking and like fast but he had so little game knowledge when he started guys like i was flaming him i was like eu lcs this guy is silver he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about he says like the silliest things about builds like as me as like a snob i'm like what are you doing but he's grown on me over the years, he has been the heart and soul of LEC. He not only was, like took a step back from being a caster, while still doing casting, he also helped the production. I will, I strongly believe a lot of the good decisions LEC has made over the years in terms of improving their product was because of him. Uh, creatively, he has grown a lot, and he just seems to be a backbone there. So he made a mistake. It is a pretty egregious one in some ways, but... Uh, I'm not going to get into the other stuff that could be seen as political. I just think that we should remember him for all he contributed to the LEC. He's a freelancer now. Unfortunately, I don't know if he, he couldn't really be employed by Riot again if he got let go from LEC. I'm like, he can come to LCS. I have no problem with that. But, yeah, we'll um, see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah. see. I think he, he really did do a lot for the game. Um, and he is one of our best like person like personality shoutcaster he was a he was a pretty complete part of like growing eu out of the slump that they were in 
Yeah, I mean, he's been there since the beginning of time. Like, <laughs> he's been from the very, very start. He's been with uh, League of Legends. So it is sad. He's casted some of the biggest moments in League of Legends history. Yeah. So it is sad to see him go. Um, I'll, I'll allude a bit more directly to what he did. Basically, mm-hmm. if you're in Germany, he did something you should never do in Germany, right? Which sucks, but... I don't know. To me, I get it. If you're in Germany, you're German. Feel free to have your opinions. I am not. But like, I don't know, man. It's been like 80 years. Like he was clearly memeing. Like people meme like that all the time. It just sucks that someone recorded him. It just sucks that it went viral. And it sucks that he is a person in the entertainment industry that has to show his face and voice daily. So, you know, I get it from both angles. I just wish it didn't have to happen in general. But he's gone. And that's it, right? That's League of Legends. That's esports for you. That's cut and dry, quick and dirty. We got uh we have we hold no nobody gets left behind. Actually everybody gets left behind. Um pretty sad to say. But I will always respect what he did for, for League of Legends. And uh I'm always gonna watch clips on YouTube from years and years ago that'll have his voice in extremely hype moments. He will always have that and he he's a part of League of Legends history. So that's really mm-hmm. cool. Absolutely. Um, yeah, well, a good send off to him, a good send off to Energy and Dignitas. Uh, we won't be talking about you guys for quite a while, probably. And on to the next stuff, right? Uh, we're gonna be taught. We have this weekend, and then we got finals, and then we got MSI, right? We got we uh, we're kind of wrapping the split up real quick. So um, stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for hanging in on this long one. Uh, try not to be too toxic, and we'll see you on the next episode. Peace.